Today, I wanna to cover some amazing development in Linux, specifically to do with Swap and Swap Space, as we get a new patch series that's being introduced, which promises a 20 to 30% performance boost when it comes to swap operations. We're gonna be getting into this and why it's important to Linux, as this new Swap Code patch series is currently up for review. So we might be getting it into our systems in the near future, submitted by a developer from Tencent. Kairuri Song here has a new proposed idea of a swap table in the memory management subsystem, which would integrate swap cache, swap maps with swap allocator about a month ago. So in order to understand what's going on with the series of patches, let's talk about swap. There are many resources for this, some better than others, but as the Arch Wiki explains it, Linux divides its physical memory, random access memory into chunks of memory called pages. Swapping is the process whereby a page of memory is copied to the pre-configured space on a hard disk called swap space to free up that page of memory. The combined sizes of the physical memory and the swap space is the amount of virtual memory available. So swap space can take the form of a disk partition or a file, mostly files nowadays, as it is easier to manage and even change things on a live or physical system without having to boot in to some sort of a safe mode or an entirely different environment in order to manage a partition and edit it. So think of if you wanted to go from, let's say two gigs on your swap space to four gigs, doubling it up, you wouldn't have to shut down the system, repartition your system. Instead, you just change up a file that already exists on the disk. And what conditions would you use swap space in? Well, a lot of people end up using it when they get an OOM condition, which is out of memory. When does that happen? Well, memory leaks, or just simply you have a small amount of physical RAM. As operating systems get more and more advanced, they tend to use more and more memory, not only for the desktop environment, but for the programs that run in the background. But I wanna read off the biggest drawback of using swap. It's when you run out of memory, it is lower performance, and that is a major thing that's tackled with this new swap table implementation and patch series. So while we just got a little bit of a breakdown, take a moment to subscribe below. YouTube can get finicky and you wouldn't wanna miss another video. Also, on your way back up, make sure to smash that like button to get this out to more people. It's an exciting day. A lot of different distributions try and explain what exactly swap space is and how important it is for your system. We got explanations on the Debian wiki, but my personal favorite and one that I'm gonna post in the description below is from RHEL or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Chapter 15 called Swap Space, which is under their storage administration guide, is a fantastic breakdown of what Swap Space is. Perhaps one of the best breakdowns, but it answers even more questions. For example, what the recommended system swap space should be. Now, a lot of people ask this question of how much swap do I really need if I already have plenty of physical RAM? Well, here is a simple but great breakdown from RHEL. They say that the amount of RAM in a system, so this is your physical memory, and depending on how much you have, less than two gigabytes, somewhere between two to eight gigabytes, somewhere between eight and 64 and above 64, the recommended swap space then is two times the amount of RAM equal to the amount of RAM, at least four gigs or at least four gigs. So why would the recommended space for two times the amount of RAM be for two gigs and anything greater than eight gigs be at least four gigs? Because honestly, when you do the math, it's about four gigs across the board, no matter how much your memory grows physically. Well, that is because swap space is a lot less likely to get used if you already have a decent amount of RAM. Basically, the consideration here is if you have under eight gigs of RAM, you need four gigs of RAM. A great breakdown, but that's not true all the way because the recommended swap space, if you're allowing for hibernation, requires much, much more. Because when the system suspends into a hibernation state, that's when we actually write the contents of memory into the storage disk. And it's a perfect opportunity to write everything into the swap space that's why they start recommending a lot more RAM if you're hibernating. So if you're under two gigs, you want three times the amount of RAM. If you're between that two to eight gigs, you need about two times the amount of RAM. And finally, if you're between that eight to 64 gigs, you need about 1.5 times the RAM. So much, much more. For example, let's say you had eight gigs, they're recommending 16 gigs of swap space in order to allow for hibernation to fully take place. And that's why I really like this breakdown of swap space. They also go into how to add swap space, remove swap space, and move swap space. It's a great document that's very easy to read and follow. 
and it applies to almost any Linux distribution, not just RHEL. Anyways, let's not focus on that. Let's get into why this new patch is such an impressive series of patches. Let's talk Unix and Linux systems and what the term swap actually means. So the term swap is used to describe an act of substituting disk space for RAM when physical RAM is full. In some of these systems, it is common to dedicate an entire partition on the hard drive or hard disk to a method called swapping. These are called swap partitions, but nowadays most systems support swap files. And one control parameter that we should talk about is swappiness. Swappiness is a Linux kernel parameter that controls the relative weight given to swapping out of runtime memory as opposed to dropping pages from the system page cache. Whenever a memory allocation request cannot be met from free memory, swappiness can be set to a value between zero to 200. Basically, the lower the value, the more likely the kernel is to what they call evict pages from the page cache, while higher values cause the kernel to prefer to swap out cold memory pages. The default value is set to 60. It's important to understand this parameter as this latest patch series will gain us up to a 20 to 30% performance gain. That's right, from basic sequential swap to heavy workloads. For both 4K and MTHP folios, the idle memory usage is already much lower. The average memory consumption is still the same or will have been even lower with further works. And this enables many more future optimizations with better defined swap operation. We're gonna get into what this means for our Linux systems, but this is amazing. We're seeing a one-stop data structure for swap. Traditionally, the kernel swap subsystem has relied on multiple overlapping data structures. Think structures for swap, cache, maps, C groups, and these all would have their own lookup paths, flags, and corner case hacks. And what this patch will do is basically eliminate and replace everything with a single swap table. Basically, these three things, cache, maps, and C groups, will all be managed in the table instead. So what does swap cache do? Well, those are what pages are currently in RAM. Swap maps is what's currently on the storage disk. And then C group maps are which memory controllers own which swap slots. So rather than chasing through a state of slabs, X arrays, flags, all these things, everything is going to get routed through a table, which will result in cleaner code, easier to reason about and optimize, and it'll create a lower maintenance burden. With all that, it adds for real world speedups and optimization. We're gonna get into the 20 to 30% boost claim, but here is what a swap table entry type and bit layout look like. So the layout here has null at the beginning, which the entry just means it's empty. There's no valid swap data associated with it. The value is set to zero, indicating that it's a placeholder for unused or a free entry. Then we have shadow, AKA we're representing shadow data. The swap count here likely represents how many times a page has been swapped in or out. Then we have the shadow value, which I would think is a reference to another swap entry or metadata related to swap operations. Then we have our folio, where a folio is just a larger block of memory, larger than a single page, so think portfolio. And this portion of the data structure would represent where that folio could be located in memory. And finally, a pointer, which would refer to another structure or location in memory where additional data can be related to this swap entry. That's just the breakdown of the table. Not that we need to make too much sense out of that, but what we need to make sense of is how this benefits us. As the claim is, the performance is looking great too. In this first test here, we have before and after system times and throughput. So running this test with the new swap table introduces a 26% improvement or 25% improvement in system time to process the swap. That's pretty wild. And following that, building the kernel with def config on temp file system with ZRAM, there are also improvements anywhere from 37.9% with 4K pages only down to a 32.8% improvement when it comes to total system time used with the 64K MTHP. So memory usage is also reduced, although this series haven't removed the swap C group array yet, the peak usage of one swap entry is already reduced from 12 bytes to 10 bytes. This is impressive too, as the amount of data that you need in order to store information for their swap entry has now been reduced as well. Another optimization on top of everything with, with this patch series. And the swap table is dynamically allocated, which means the idle memory usage will be reduced by a lot. 
Some other highlights and notes, which I'm going to break down, we saw anywhere from a 20% to 30% boost in swap throughput, which is pretty great, meaning things like, meaning operations that used to take a second could take anywhere from 0.7 to 0.8 seconds now. Now we all understand that we're not in this time scale at all. We're probably more in like milliseconds or nanoseconds and over a bunch of operations, this really, really adds up. So this basically improved our sequential swap IO throughput, which climbed from somewhere in that four gigabyte per second range to five gigabytes per second. Also the kernel builds under ZRAM saw system and user time drop somewhere between that 20 to 30% across various different page sizes and job counts. This all translates into snappier performance under memory pressure, faster hibernation and resume times, and generally less time spent with stalled IO. That's pretty awesome. But we also see a leaner memory footprint. By dynamically allocating the swap space and trimming per entry overhead, it takes 12 bytes of representation down to 10 bytes of representation, meaning idle memory usage for the table disappears, especially on systems with a lot of swap devices or C groups, this can add up because we're using less data to represent the memory footprint. We also see things like finer grained locking and better THP handling. THP or MTHP stands for multi-page huge pages, which is a feature that allows you to access large memory pages that are larger than the standard four kilobyte pages and can be used for more efficient memory management and systems that need to handle a lot of data. And what's nice with this new patch series, we're gonna see speed ups that reduce the THP fragmentation and also give us a performance gain in these types of swaps as well, as we get finer grained locking for these types of scenarios. There's even more that comes with the new patch series for swap tables, and it is a great thing. I'm gonna be following this patch series, so you'll wanna make sure again to subscribe below but this is really a springboard and a very exciting development in Linux. Not only are we gonna get future innovation from this as we can update things like virtual swap devices, create better dynamic observation and throttle swap behaviors, we're hopefully going to see more optimizations specifically with things like the C group and remove extra control maps entirely. What does this mean for Linux users? Well, we're gonna get a cleaner swap space design, which means fewer bugs, more confident backports, and easier future reviews for devs when it comes to swap. We also see better quality of service as the memory C group swap accounting becomes leaner and more predictable, which helps with memory management. Performance under pressure, whether it's a tiny IoT device using ZRAM or a massive database server, swap is gonna become faster and more efficient, which is Absolutely fantastic for us Linux users. And of course, we have an opportunity for new features now with things like in kernel compression to zero copy remote swap. The swap table is an amazing way forward to innovating how the swap space works. And for those of you who wanna learn even more about these concepts of pages and page caching, C groups, so on and so forth, because I just don't have enough time to cover things in more depth, well, there's two resources I want to take you through. And I'm going to post in the description below so you'll want to check it out. First, I have a video already giving you a general understanding of what swap space is. You'll want to check that out. But this one here is a memory management overview of Linux, which helps you with topics like virtual memory primer, huge pages, zones, nodes, page cache, anonymous memory, reclaiming, compaction, and out of memory. This will all help you start getting a general understanding of how memory management works in Linux and is available on the kernel.org website. Now, another wonderful thing that's available on the kernel.org website is swap management, chapter 11. This goes really into depth on how swap actually works, giving you not only the structures of swap files, but also how they interact with each other. They also give you diagrams of everything, which are kind of hard to see right now as I have my colors inverted here, but trust me, it's a great tool if you're trying to learn more about swap and swap space and how it performs and lives in the Linux kernel. Hopefully you learned a little bit today in this significant patch series. Again, this new introduction of swap tables in Linux promises a 20 to 30% performance boost for swap operations, especially under heavy workloads. The new system is designed to improve memory efficiency, reduce idle memory usage, and offer better extensibility and optimization for future swap subsystems. It's important to Linux because the users are gonna see significant performance improvements for those of us who use swap space and rely heavily on swap. Think people who have memory constrained systems, 
we're gonna see a reduction in memory usage and also an increase in swap operation efficiency, making Linux even more suitable for high demand workloads and better for low end systems. I'm very excited for this new dev. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe below. Hit that like button so more people get excited for this patch. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.